Hi, this is Jim Wright, and in this series of continuing lessons, we will continue on with the lesson about creating a setup. So what exactly is a setup? Well, for an NC programmer, a setup answers these questions. What is it that I am making or machining? What am I making it from? What is the material that the model is made from? Are there any clamps or fixtures that I need to avoid during the machining process? What cutting tools will I use? And which operations will I use to machine this part? A setup is a CAM assembly that references the CAD geometry that was created by a designer. It contains all the information required to create a CNC or sometimes called NC program. Things like the part and blank material, the cutting tools, and the operations. Additionally, this CAM assembly or this setup keeps the CAM data separate from the CAD data. And this is very important when model updates happen, and we know that they will happen because they do so frequently. So when model updates happen, the fact that we've got our CAM data separate makes it so much easier for us to accommodate those model updates. Some definitions that we'll need to discuss before we actually get into the, uh, the lesson itself. There are a variety of setup templates that you can access and use. Um, for this first lesson, I'll be using the prismatic milling and hole making template. Some of the others I will introduce as we go through the, uh, the various lessons. But you can tell from the name what the actual setup template is about. For example, prismatic milling and hole making indicates that it's going to be used for machining of prismatic parts and also drilling and making holes. One thing that I find that confuses new users when they first start using Solid Edge Cam Pro is what we call the Operation Navigator. But if you're familiar with Solid Edge, you can think of it as the Pathfinder for machining operations. The big difference with the Operation Navigator is that it has four views. The first view is the program order view and this is the view that I typically use when I'm getting ready to post process the program because the order of the operation listed in this view is the same order that they will be post processed in and run on the machine tool. Another view that I spend quite a bit of time in is the machine tool view. The machine tool view shows things like the machine tool carousel, which we'll explain in a minute, the cutting tools that are in that carousel, and of course the operations that are using those particular cutting tools. The geometry view contains information about what it is we're machining, what it is we're machining it from, the material type, and of course any fixtures or clamps that we're using. The last view is the machining method view. And in that view, we have information about how much stock we will be leaving with each operation. You'll notice that there's rough, semi-finish, and finish as standard machining methods. Another thing you'll notice is that in every view, you see the operations. So you can see that in the first view, the floor facing operation will be the second operation that is run and it's going to be using the tool called NXT0201 underscore 006. In the third view you can see that it's being applied to the workpiece and in the fourth view you can see that this particular operation is designed for finishing. We'll get into more details about the operation navigator as we continue the lesson. Another thing that we need to identify or define up front is the part, blank, and check geometry. We do that in the workpiece. The part geometry is what the CAD designer has given to us and that we need to make. Consider it the CAD design model or we call it simply the part. The blank geometry is what we were making this part from. So in this case, we have a billet of material that is the same material as what the CAD designer told us this part needs to be made from. The check geometry represents things that we don't want to cut into. 
In this case, it's the vice jaws. You can also see at the bottom of the dialog, the workpiece is where we specify the material type. Another thing that I find confuses new users is the carrier. In the machine tool view, you'll see something called the carrier, and in that carrier, you'll see pockets. If you think about a machine tool with a typical carousel, the carousel with all the little pockets in it that hold the milling tools, that is what we call the carrier. And of course, the carrier has several pockets in it, and those correspond to the pockets in our machine tool view. In our example here, we have a face mill in pocket one. Okay, let's get the lesson started. In a previous lesson, we already showed how to transfer files from Solid Edge to Solid Edge Cam Pro. So we're skipping that step here, and we're gonna get straight into creating a setup. To do that, I choose File, New, Remember, we said that we're creating an assembly here, so this new file in our assembly navigator will be above the rest of the files here. Make sure you've chosen the Manufacturing tab, and then, of course, specify the units for your particular part of the world, inches for the U.S., millimeters for the right-thinking people everywhere else. And in this case, I'm going to choose the Prismatic Milling and Hole Making Template. But before I choose OK, I want to make sure I've specified the directory where this file should go. Once those items have been specified, you can then choose OK. First, let me switch to the assembly navigator so you can see that in fact I do have an assembly that references my build assembly that contains the part and the vice assembly. Now that we have the setup created, we can start inputting information about how we want to machine this part. First, we'll switch to the machine tool view open up the carousel or the carrier and into pocket number one we will create a new tool. I can do that a couple of different ways. I can choose the create tool button up here or I can use mouse button number three or the right mouse button to say insert a cutting tool. I'll retrieve a tool from the library filtering only for face mills Here's a 43 millimeter face mill. If I hit the display button, it looks appropriate for this job. So I choose OK and then cancel. And that tool is now in pocket number one. So I have a cutting tool, but I also need to specify the geometry that I will machine. We do that in the geometry view. Double click on workpiece to edit it. We'll choose Specify Part and choose the CAD model that the designer gave us. Next, we'll specify the blank geometry. In this case, I don't have a design body that represents the blank or the raw stock, so I'll choose Bounding Block. And Solid Edge Cam Pro will create a block that encapsulates the part. Now I happen to know that this block will have some stock on the top side for me to machine off, so I can either grab the drag handles to change that dimension, or I can type in a value, five millimeters of extra stock. Next, we can choose the check geometry or things that we don't want to machine. In this case, 
the fixed jaw and the movable jaw. Finally, we can specify the material to be machined. I'll choose aluminum. In a later lesson, we'll show you how to add materials to this library. And with that, our setup is complete because in the machining method view, we already have several machining methods that we can use. So I'll return to the program order view and we can create a new operation. Again, you can choose the create operation icon or right mouse click under program and say insert operation. The type here is mill planer. We'll explain the different types of templates that we have later on. But for now, if you're following along with this lesson, just make sure that your type is set to mill planer. I'm going to choose the floor facing without wall operation. We'll put this into the program group. The tool will be the tool that we created earlier. We'll specify the geometry as the workpiece. Remember, that's where we specified the part blank and check geometry. And for the method, we'll choose mill finish. You can also change the name of the operation if you so choose. Remember, no spaces are allowed. Now this may look a bit complex, but trust me, almost all of the settings have already been made for you. In this case, all I need to really do is specify the cut area floor which will be the top of my geometry I can then generate the operation verify the toolpath using 3D dynamic mode So you can see that creating a setup is a little bit of work up front, but it makes it so much easier when we finally get to the point of creating operations. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Join me next time when we'll talk more in depth about the face modeling operation.